thank you all for coming tonight. It's great to see a, a big turnout here as we uh, you know, try to solve difficult problems that are ahead of us. Um, my name is Tom Bayram. I'm the sitting president for the board of directors of Los Libos Community <coughs> Services District. I want to point out the other board members are here. We're not sitting as a board. This is a workshop, but we do have members of the board that are here. I'll just go to see. I see Lisa Palmer uh, right there. Uh, Brad Ross, got director uh, Julie Kennedy, and Greg Parks. Everybody's trying to hide from me. Did I get everybody? Uh, so the um, the first thing we'll do is if you would all just rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and Thank you. Um, we're going to open up a, uh, a public comment period. I would like to ask the, the workshop will, will be the ability to talk about the topics we're going to have. So this would be for items unrelated to the workshop. So items not on the agenda today. So is there any, we'll just, I won't take speakers, so we'll just take a raise of hand. Is there anything? You're limited to three minutes. Does anybody have any public comment? It's not on the workshop. Okay, would you stand up and give your name, please? Really transparent and fix the charts 
and provide accurate information that everyone can rely on. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gott. Was there one other item? Yeah, I don't see anything else. Dr. Commentary still? I don't see him on this. All right, and then before I close, do any of the board members want to make any comments before we get started? Okay. Well, again, thank you all for coming. I'm going to turn it over to Guy Savage, who will lead us from there. Again, thank you for coming out tonight. Okay, give me just a second here, please. Who is this guy? So I'm here tonight. So my name is Jeff Green. I was asked by the district to facilitate the working part of the conversation tonight, which I will do. While Guy gets that up there, we're going to actually start with really an overview. I know some of you, and I've talked to several of the board leadership, and I get a sense of sort of where the process has gone. I followed it. My home base is just over the hill. By day, I'm the director of the foundation at Santa Barbara City College, but by night and weekends, I do a lot of facilitating meetings, like hundreds a year. And believe it or not, I actually like this stuff, especially when it's really tough. Previously, I actually was elected to a special assessment district, but I've worked on that side. I worked in the philanthropy side, the community side. And really, my job tonight is to help you all have the conversation and get the input that you need so that the district can make the best decision. So we'll talk a little bit more about what that's going to look like in just a moment. But tonight, really, the idea is to get as much feedback, guidance, opinions, questions answered as we possibly can, knowing that this is a combination of art and science. And our pledge to you, my pledge to you tonight, is I want to make sure that we all have room. Everybody's opinions will get registered. Everybody's input will get heard, get captured, and get used in the ultimate process. And Guy, in just a moment here, is going to give you an overview of sort of where the process stands to date relative to where we're going. There you go. There's my spell check. So apologies in advance. But what we're going to do is spend some of the first portion here just giving an overview and making sure everybody's working with the same information. And then we're going to walk through all of the different choices. And there's really, at this point, nine different questions or sets of questions that we want to make sure we get a sense of where the community is. And there's also some technical pieces that will be fielded and put into this decision-making process. And we are, as you can see, working in a hybrid environment, as I know you've been practicing for some time. So we're going to make sure that the folks that are in the room and then folks that are not in the room also get a chance. So that's really the outline for tonight. We will promise to have ourselves completed, wrapped up by 8 o'clock, which was the promise. So we're not going to go on forever. And I will say, and I'll say this again in a bit once we get moving, but the idea here tonight is to capture, as of this moment, where everyone is. So what your concerns are, what your questions are, what your strong opinions and guidance for the board is. Ultimately, as you know, this is a new district, just a few years old, and there's a big couple of decisions to make in the not-too-distant future. So what they're asking and what I'm here to help with is make sure that we get all that input, put it together, get the technical input, and then they'll have something to work with. A lot of these questions are sort of either or, some are a little bit of both. You know, you can look at the questions and say, well, if you're willing to spend X dollars, you can get this. If you're willing to spend this many dollars, you get that. And so there's just a wide range of things that they're going to want to hear from you on. So that's what we're here to do. We also will promise you this. We will be coming, this is not the only time for public comment. This is the biggest one. This is the first out of the gate with everything that's been gathered to now, but it is not the only time, obviously. And you all know we're having a knock on their door, right? And I know some of you do that. All right. Guy, you want to start through the presentation? And I'll step aside for a few. All right. Thank you. So as Jeff said, this is kind of the agenda for the night and the evening goals. We're going to try and share information about some of the potential solutions. We're not going to talk in detail about really any of the solutions. Let me be clear about that. We're going to hit it at a higher level because we recognize that some of the people who are in the room, this may be the first time you've been having this conversation, whereas many others in the room have been spending days and days and days digging into the details. So for this meeting, we're going to keep it pretty high level so we don't lose anybody. We want to make sure everybody's on the same page. As Jeff mentioned, we're going to answer questions. There's going to be lots of time for dialogue, for you to write down some questions, for you to ask questions interactively. Most importantly, we want to get input from property owners so we can discuss what our next steps will be as we move down this road toward some sort of a Prop 218 vote. So as it says there on the bottom, input will be used 
for the board to help craft a specific solution or set of solutions that will ultimately go to that vote. Jeff, you want to talk about ground rules? Yes, I would love to. Um, so here's what I want to ask tonight. I want to actually ask you all what's going to be comfortable for you. I mean, we talk about ground rules when you got a crowd uh, size of us tonight. We want to make sure there's room for everybody. So this could be things like raising hands, making sure, like, if you know you like to fill space and, and share a lot, maybe take a deep breath tonight. If you tend to be quieter and uh, in a large group of people, you're shyer, you know, try to find the courage to say, say what you need to say or at least write it down and, and pass it on. So I just want to get a sense of what folks are comfortable with in the way of ground rules of the conversation. I, and I want your permission uh, to please don't take it personally if I say, got it, we're gonna pause right there and three other people have a hand up. So I'm gonna try to just keep making it move and, and have space. Is, is a hand raising system fair? Yeah. Good old fashioned, we all learned in elementary school. All right, um, what I'll do is I will try to identify, and we don't, don't know all each other, so I will just try to point and keep a list of who's going if you think I've missed you. Um, again, don't take it personally, but feel free to remind me. Say, hey, I had my hand up. Uh, and we're going to do this in pieces. Um, and so uh, we'll do raise, raise hands. I will keep lists. We'll make sure everybody has something to say. Um, I was saying to the guy before we got in today, depending on how many people were here, um, we're going to probably break up and do an exercise because we can't literally go down the line and ask everybody to, to, uh, to monologue or share. So um, what I've been sitting there doing is writing up uh, posters, and we're going to spread those around the room, and there will be an op um, opportunity. We're going to explain this sheet. This will be one of the key things, and for those of you online, there's, a, there's an online survey version of this, to really get people to, to give us in a quantitative way what your primary concerns are. Right, and so we're going to talk about what all the different factors are, but we're going to make sure that we capture that in multiple different ways. Um, anything else? Those of you that have gone to meetings here before, been part of the district process, anything else on your mind that you say, you know, it would be really great if... I'm open. Uh, yes, yes, and then yes. Start in the back. <laughs> Um, my name is Mary Hayden. I think it would be great if we heard primarily from people who live within the district or okay. own property within the district. Okay, appreciate that. Um, yes. My name is Donna Cunningham. I think it would be really great if we focus on what's presented tonight and stay away from opinions about how the board is run and all that kind of stuff. I'm here to hear what the options are tonight. Okay, um, absolutely. So. Clarity, in the end, the vote is, is of property owners in the district. I think you all know that. That's the process and the way the legal structure works. Um, that doesn't mean that folks who are, who are not in that class can't say something, but we do want to focus as much as we can on the folks that are in the end going to have to vote. Um, what you just said, I want to I want to thank you for that. Um, I know there's a lot of issues at play, but tonight I'm really going to try hard to focus this on the question at hand. Um, so it's not a general overview of everything uh, that's happening, but it's really about this this core project that actually is the very reason for being for the district. We good with that? Yes? Okay. And then here, and then we'll go over here. Um, I'm Lisa Pongrasic. Uh, I live, I don't know, San Marcos. Um, totally agree with both Mary and Donna, and I'm not kind of what Donna said. I think it would be very helpful if and I don't know how you're structuring, but if more comments and questions could be held at the end, because I'm really viewing this as an opportunity to get information, and I think some of us you know, have not had a lot of time to process it, and so I'd rather really absorb as much like a sponge, and I, know I totally appreciate why we have comments, but I'd have less of that and more information gathering. Okay, so thank you for that. We are going to, to share a lot of information, and there will be pauses all the way along. If something doesn't make sense, if we get into the technical jargon, I know we've got a room full of every, if there are folks here that are engineers that live and breathe this. There are people that are just hearing this for the first time. Um, so we got folks of all across the spectrum. So we're gonna make sure if the anything is not clear or somebody uses an acronym, feel free to stop and say, hey, wait, what does that mean? Um, and then to your point about the, the general feedback, I always, in, in especially a room this size, I wanna make sure that at the end, um, if we haven't asked a particular question and, and we've gotten through the, the sort of the nine areas we really need the feedback on, we'll open up and say anything else. And at that point, folks that say, I'm good, I'm out, that's fine. Uh, but uh, for anybody that wants to stick around and, and have anything else say, I want to capture that too. And that's why I have these easels scattered around in this pen. Um, I saw a hand here, then we'll go here. Yes? Hi, my name is Rhoda Johnson. And I, I want to suggest we speak up because I had a really hard time hearing what they were saying. Okay, thank you. I, I am loud, as you can tell. Yeah. Um, but yes, if, if someone's softer, we'll try to make sure that we you know, protect if you can. Repeat the question. Or, and I will happily do that. I will echo for, uh, for softer speakers. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, my name is Mark 
Parker Thill. I've been involved in this for probably 15 years, and uh, just want to make sure it's important that everybody knows that the district does not have complete information on a lot of the options available to us. So go into that with that in mind. And then also I would say there are a lot of residents of Los Olivos that don't live in the district boundaries that do get affected by this. So it's one Los Olivos, whether you're on this side of the line or that side of the line. So especially if you live right next to a plant that could go into your, your neighborhood. So I, I would just, it's one Los Olivos. Appreciate that. Um, is that a buffer sticker yet? <laughs> it might be. It will be. I, hopefully it will not happen. Yeah, okay. Yes, here, and then we'll go back over here. Yeah. I appreciate what he said about one Los Olivos, but I, I just want to understand clarity. If you're within the special services district, those are the only people that can vote. The people outside cannot vote, and is that also the same exact line for those who would pay versus those who would not pay? Um, yes and yes. And one of the things when we get into was look, take a look at the map. Um, and so I think you know both can be true. Pe people can certainly, you know, we're here to hear what, where folks are at, but I want everyone to be clear that there is a legal definition of who gets to vote and what it is, so we're gonna make sure that that's apparent to everybody. Um, and then we'll go to the folks there. Um, so uh, with one more hand over here, yes, yes ma'am. Um, are you open to considering having the uh, CSD connect down to Solvang and have be a part of their regional plan? Is that on the table? Can we hold that question? Because let me, I'm gonna ask Guy to speak to that, but yes, I, I, I got it right here and we'll make sure that that gets addressed before the evening's over. All right, for great, does that work for everybody? So we'll make sure everybody, there's room for everybody. I'll repeat soft speakers, we'll raise hands. We'll give everybody space. Yes, ma'am. I just have a quick question. Yes. Um, typically, it's protocol in public meetings for speakers to identify themselves. Is that true tonight? It's, I like the fact that people say my name is. It helps me. Um, but I'm going to look to Guy as the professional and say, what would you prefer? And board members. I, I like Jeff, and I think everybody would prefer that people do. Um, there's no legal requirement. For you too. Uh, the mute button. <laughs> um, somebody's unmuted. Can you mute yourself, please? Sorry. Sorry. Anybody walk up to this person on the street yet and try to mute them and realize that you can't do that? All right. Um, so yeah, I, I would say if folks are willing, uh, name is, is helpful, and um, and I'll leave it at that. I, I'm not. I'm not personally gonna police that as far as a, a legal requirement, but um, can we agree on that? Okay, thank you. Anything else in the ground rules, how we work tonight? Are we good? Okay, and I'm gonna hand it back to Guy. Excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm online, I've my hand up. Oh, sorry, yeah, you know what, that's gonna be, with, with our technology, let me let me promise you this, I will, I will go back to the screen occasionally, as I did not just do, so my apologies, and yes, Okay, no, no worries, but um, I just want to repeat that the people online are not able to clearly hear what anyone in the audience is saying. So, it, at the very least, I think that if someone is going to um, uh, ask a question, that you share your microphone um, so that that audio can get picked up so that everyone online can actually understand what's going on because um, and let me ask this, uh, can you hear me when I speak like this? I can hear you, okay. but the, the people in the audience is very, it's very distorted. Okay. And I don't know if you have some additional speakers set up in the room, um, but I know that that is that common complaint from my mother. Okay, I, I, I appreciate that. I think with the technology that we have here tonight, I, the best we can do for, for uh, the uh, larger conversation is I will repeat and, and be concise and make sure that it is spoken in this fashion clearly, but unfortunately I, I don't have a mic. Uh, we have one in the center of the room and we don't, I don't think we have the ability to, to pass it fully around. So. Um, but I, I will do my best to make sure that it's clear like this. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, anyone else online that needs to, uh, before we get, I'll look at that, there's the slide. Uh, any other? Uh, no, there's nobody else online. Offering? Just switch, switch to see who else. Oh, look, there we go. Okay, all right, so back to Guy. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jeff, I didn't need to put you along. So, uh, 
Um, the first thing, you know, when we were talking about pulling together a workshop, uh, one of the first things that came up was people wanted to know, well, where are we in the process? What's going on right now? What are we up to? Where are we headed? That sort of thing. So without putting dates on it, because I didn't want to set any expectations regarding a specific date, this is kind of what's going on right now. So this green box up here that says preferences, priorities, and discussion, that's tonight. That's what we're doing right now. Uh, at the same time, uh, for those who've been attending our meetings, you would know that we have a, a sewer engineer, wastewater engineer, who's looking at a whole myriad of potential um, both collection, treatment, and disposal. He's not worried about disposal. We're going to talk about that tonight. But he's looking at the collection and treatment sides of that. And I've got a slide that'll show you that in just a minute. Um, so that's happening simultaneously. He should uh, provide his report to us toward the end of this month, so in about a week, 10 days. Both of those will, uh, a recap of tonight's meeting as well as his report will be at our February 15th meeting here at 6 p.m. So that's the two things kind of coming together here. At that meeting, we'll have a discussion about what additional technical study is required, what workshops might make sense, do we need more information, so on and so forth. We may go through that a couple of times. We may get as far as going into what's known as environmental. You have to do an environmental review on any project like this. Um, as we go into environmental, we might realize, oh, there's something we need from a technical perspective and come back and look at some more technical things. And eventually, we will finish all of that and carry on to a Proposition 218 vote. Okay, so I tried to simplify it. There's a lot going on in each one of these, of these boxes. At high level, this is where we're at. We're gathering information from a technical side, and we're gathering information from the community, all right? Oh, and all along the way, <laughs> um, we'll be presenting our findings, everything we find. If you haven't looked at our website, um, there is a ton of information on the technical side of things. You'll see every report that was ever done, a wastewater management plan, what we talked about from a groundwater management plan. We talked about siding, we talked about a gravity fed, uh, design document. All of that is on our website. Um, and on those cards you all received at the bottom, you can see the website on there. My email is also on there. Um, so you can just email me if you can't find something you're looking for. So we'll be getting all of that, presenting it. We'll have more discussion. Um, and at the same time, we're going to begin searching in, in depth for more funding. Um, I think all of us would agree if we can get lots and lots of grant funding, that would be a good thing, as opposed to us paying for it. The more grant funding, the better. So, very brief history. I'm not going to go into this. Most of you have seen this slide at least once. So, um, special problems area. We are a special problems area due to nitrate in our shallow groundwater in particular. Um, and I'll talk some more about that later on. But back in 1974, they, they had a lot more wells they tested. We've tested a couple. The district now has two wells, one over by Ballard, right where it makes the bend there and one just, just uh, over here by Rubio Ranch Winery. Um, we have those two wells that we can now sample groundwater. Uh, so we'll get more information on that as well. But um, So we've got this uh, special problems that made in 1974. Um, as Mark and lots of others were talking earlier, you know, by the time we got into the 2010s in particular, people started talking a lot about maybe we need to form a district. Um, eventually in 2018, there was a vote for a district, and 73% of those that voted voted in favor of forming this district that we're all part of. Um, and really, the, the message there, and I think remains today, was, was all about ensuring local control. Right? We wanted to be in charge of our destiny versus having the, the county or the state dictate to us what we needed to do. Really, that's that last bullet. Um, if we didn't do something, the state or the county could come in and enforce some things on us. Um, for those of you who attended the workshop um, this month with, uh, with uh, environmental health from the county and the uh, Central Coast Regional Water Quality Control Board folks, um, the video that is posted, if you haven't seen it, um, they talked about their authority, um, what they would do, what they want to see. And I've got a couple of slides really quickly to describe that. So again, 2018, the district was formed. So a little over four years ago, coming up five years now. So for those who don't know, um, this picture, the blue, is the official boundaries of the district. Um, we have this little commercial area, and that's not parcel by parcel exact, but it's really, really close. 
Um, some parcels are, are split there. But basically, all the blue represents the residential areas. Uh, the, the green represents the commercial. And everything in that bat box is inside the, the district. And as some pointed out, you know, we have people who live right around the district who have some concerns. And we're going to hear their voices as well. So I mentioned the Central Coast Regional Water Quality Control Board. Um, they are the organization, they're a, an arm of the state. Um, they develop and enforce water quality objectives and, and implement plans that help protect our local drinking water in particular. Um, they have authority over our individual uh, septic tanks and community wastewater systems. Um, at this point, they're saying they will not mandate something, that they're leaving it up to us because they really want to see us uh, maintain local control. So they're looking for us to build some sort of a community wastewater reclamation system. Santa Barbara County Environmental Health, on the other hand, they were also here earlier this month. Um, they provide oversight via what's known as the LAM, the Local Agency Management Plan. A copy of that is on the website. So um, basically, it dictates if you're, for instance, if you're on a septic tank today and it fails, it's environmental health that you'll be working with to figure out what the right replacement is for your septic tank and how to do that until we get to a community system. Uh, they also have said they won't mandate a wastewater solution. And what that really means is they're not going to come in and say, you guys have to do it this way. They're just saying, do something, right? And they've, they've got rules and regulations that they're going to say, you've got to meet these sorts of things. But they're not going to tell us, use this system over that system or this collection over that collection. They're just going to help guide us through. Um, as it says, they're looking, they too are looking for our community reclamation. So um, I'm going to, sorry for the, the really simple slides here, but I'm trying to drive home what we're talking about here when we talk about a wastewater reclamation system. So we have a source, right? Whether it's a home, a church, a building downtown, there's some sort of collection, right? So if this is your home and you're on a septic tank, this is all going to happen on your site. But if we're talking about a community-wide system, um, that's pipes that are in the ground somewhere, right? So you've got a source some sort of collection, and then you have a treatment facility. Now, some of the solutions we're, we've been talking about kind of sit on the border between collection and treatment. And just, I'm gonna use some words here, so uh, stop me if you're not following along with me. So when we talk about something called an effluent sewer, or step, a lot of us have heard the term step, right? It has a small tank on your facility, and then it pushes things to a centralized facility. So the initial separation of, of sewage is done on your site, and then the rest of, uh, instead of going into a leach line or some side of, sort of dry well, it goes to a centralized treatment facility where all the nitrates are taken out to a level that make it safe to re-inject into the ground. So the last step is disposal. So you go through treatment and now you have much cleaner water. It's not drinking water ready yet, right? But something that has had all those nitrates and other bad things taken out of it, so we can put it back into the ground. So this is the really simple view, right? You've got a source, you've got some collection that happens, you've got treatment, and then you've got disposal. And regardless of whether you're on a septic tank today and all this is happening on your parcel, or if you're in a city with a sewer where it's spread out you know, through pipes and that sort of thing. Is everybody okay with that? Are you okay with that? Do you understand where I'm going? Again, sorry if it's too simple for you, but I just wanted to kind of Make sure everybody's on the same page here. All right. So this is just kind of words, because I'm going to post, in fact, these slides are already posted uh, on our website. This is just words that go with that prior slide, slide to say what collection, treatment, and disposal really are. Um, again, I just want to make sure that somebody's looking at them online, but look at the picture and say, well, what's that all about? So there's some words to, to help describe it. So this is the first discussion we're really going to have tonight. Jeff's going to come back up and join me. But um, when we talk about that sort of a, of a solution, right, we all have preferences and, and desires around what we want to see with our system. So I think all of us would recognize that cost is a major concern to us, right? We want to make sure, I too live in this district, we want to make sure that we're not paying more than we have to, right? Um, we have different tolerances, though, for costs, right? Um, some of us would, would uh, want to see that cost go as far as zero as possible, while others might say, you know, I'll pay a little extra for certain things, right? And so the next several bullets are maybe some of those certain things that you might pay a little extra for. So for instance, where is the plant located or where is the disposal located? 
it, right? Those might be things that you might be willing to pay a little extra for. Um, ownership and maintenance responsibility. So if we go back to my conversation a minute ago about those things I was describing as effluent systems, those are something that would, would have a portion of the system on your parcel, right? Um, and depending upon how we approach things, either the district might have to have access to your parcel, which some people really don't want, or you as a homeowner would have some responsibility to take care of what's essentially like a septic tank. It's something that has to be pumped occasionally um, and be maintained in a working order. It needs power from your house because uh, effluent sewer, the ones we're looking at at least, uh, use a pressurized line to collect things. So there's this conversation around how much responsibility do I want or would I rather just flush my toilet, run my dishwasher and not have to worry about anything else on my side? That's the, the other side of it, right? So some of it could be me, some of it may, may not be. So you understand your tolerance and, and what your preference is around ownership and maintenance responsibility. The next one here is there has been a lot of discussion about build a sewer, it'll induce growth. And in, in particular, I think people are focused on, uh, we're often focused on the downtown core. But in general, people are concerned about, you know, we like the way Los Olivos is today generally. And want to make sure that, you know, suddenly we put in a sewer that mostly all of a sudden overnight turn into 3,000 people. Don't think that'll happen, but that's the concern, right? We want to make sure that we're hearing what you have to say about a sewer and its potential for growth industry. The next one is the treatment plant, right? Now, there are lots of different types of treatment plants. We've talked about uh, several of them through meetings. Um, we've been, since the formation of the district, pretty much very focused on something called an MBR, a membrane bioreactor uh, plant. And the reason we've been focused on that, it's really two. Uh, one, it fits in a small size, right? It, it literally is something the vendor that uh, we've been looking at brings it in on a flatbed. So you can, if you can fit it on a flatbed, visually you can see how big at least the treatment piece is. Now, that's not the entire footprint of the plant, right? Because you have to be able to drive trucks around it. There's gonna be other things that have to happen, but at least the treatment piece itself um, can fit on a, on a flatbed. But there are other treatment approaches that might be larger in, in scope. Um, different technologies that could be used, different approaches. And so we want to understand your preferences and, and get some input from you around this whole conversation about treatment plant footprint and size, right? Um, next up is potential for odor. Um, the approaches we've been talking about thus far um, are very similar to what Maddox is just putting in. Most of us know Maddox is putting in the system. Um, and obviously, uh, facility like Maddie's isn't gonna put in something that has a ton of smell, right? It's a high-end uh, uh, resort. They don't wanna have sewer smell running around their, their room. So um, we do wanna talk though about people's tolerance and preference for, well, how much kind of at a high level is odor important to me? You know, there's a little odor, am I okay with that? Or absolutely no odor is what I want. So we'll have a conversation around that. Next up is um, what I've listed as view shed impact. So, um, you know, one of the first things people often think about when we think about traditional sewers, not uh, the type, type we've been looking at, but you know, as you're driving, for instance, up uh, Highway 101, just there by Nipomo, you know, there's that, the, all those massive ponds that are out there, um, and there's a, a large facility there, right, for treating. Now, it's a much bigger community than ours, right? Um, it's, it's many, many times the size of ours, but there is a, a concern by many about the view shed impact. So when we build this thing, What's it going to do to what we drive past and look at every single day? Right? So we want to understand that. Um, and then the last one that's listen, listed here is this conversation around innovation. And are you open as a community to some of the, what I'll put in quotes here, uh, newer technologies as opposed to the more traditional tried and true sorts of approaches? Um, in some cases, that might mean a little more cost. In other cases, it might mean a difference in size of the footprint or what have you. And so we started with that list, and now here's Jeff to help us see if they're ready. <laughs> he needs to excuse, it's good. <laughs> All right. Um, well, let me first ask a question. Uh, did that, uh, thank you for that, Pat. It's actually the best one I've heard so far, as far as all nine of these and a definition. Does any risk, high level confusion, questions? Guy, what the heck did you mean when you said? Great, all right. Um, 
so let me then, I'm going to jump here, and one thing we're going to do tonight, I'm just going to apologize in advance for two things, kind of, sorry, not sorry. Um, first of all, I want to recognize that when the district was formed, it was 74%, I believe, vote in favor. So I understand not everybody thought this was a good bargain, and yet, democracy, there you have it, so we're all, we're all in it now. Um, and so what we want to do is, regardless of whether you thought this was a brilliant idea or you thought not, not worth it, um, now that we're here, we want to make sure that it's the best possible across the board. So just I want to acknowledge that that is understood for, for folks in the room. Um, I do want to first here go to other considerations, and I'll explain the ways that we're going to capture your preferences, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, what, that was, anything that was not mentioned as a major issue for you that we want to put on the table? Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, just, first of all, thank you, Guy. That was awesome. Um, speed. Speed. Right, Timeline like, to get like it done? How, yeah. I mean, okay. I, I moved in 10 years ago. I heard it was imminent back then, and I've lost all my hair since. And <laughs> ten, 10 years later, and we're still here. And so, right. just speak. I appreciate that. So for folks online who didn't hear that, the, the concern on it was just simply the, the timeline. How long does this take? We know this has been talked about for many years. Um, and uh, what's, the, what's the likelihood of, of the speed? We'll, we'll get a little bit to that. And mm -hmm. that I know that timeline <laughs> was a timeline without times on it, which is a tricky, tricky move. Sure. Um, but we'll talk about that. Yes, sir. The other one may be up there, but uh, would just be disruption to uh, town and pr private and public property, just with the different options. Okay. And, and that you would say in the process of construction, getting it done, disruption would be the concern? Yeah, just, you know, running okay. pipes and, and different, you know, it's a factor. Okay. Di you know, disruption to downtown during construction. So. Right. Um, folks online, so the other concern is disruption to uh, life, business, normal flow during the period that this is being done. Um, both good ones. Other things on the table? Yes, sir. Are we looking at a phased approach? Like, are we going, can we improve the concept in the downtown corridor who's using more and improve it to the rest of the community and what growth needs? Okay, I'm going to actually toss that to you, Guy. Could you, can, you, can you comment on that? Um, yes, I can. So, for those on on uh, online, the comment was um, uh, about a phase approach. Just kind of prove it downtown. I think it was the phrase that was used, and well, then roll it out my, elsewhere. My goal, my bring it in a little closer. Yes. I, I love this. I love the timeline disruption. I totally understand everything you put up there. But if we prove, if we have a concept that's small, it's provable, uh, it leaves Los Olivos. Um, you know, sovereign is a good way to put it. It doesn't disrupt very much, so we can keep the financial implications to the businesses who spend huge amounts of money to rent out the space. Uh, we don't drive away customers with a major product. You know, I'm just saying, if something works small downtown and it was like, oh, that was easy, you won over the rest of the community. Right. So let me answer your question about phase. Um, so if you go back and you look at, for instance, the wastewater management plan of 2010, there were documents in the, before the, the district was formed. More recently, even documents that have been produced since the district was formed have all talked about phase. They've looked at it in different ways, you know. Um, the most recent one talked about a phase one, which was downtown, a phase two, the, the small lots right around downtown, and then kind of phase three was everybody else. Earlier documents looked at it as just commercial versus residential. Um, so we've got, a, we've, we've got a lot of documents that talk about different ways to phase it. So I think, and I've got a slide later on. If we get to is that the direction you're going? We're not going that way just yet. So you're uh, going we're going to talk about down. that. That's part of, that's why we want to understand okay. from, from you all exactly what, what makes sense. Okay. Yes, sir. What is our deadline? At what point does the state say, you guys have messed around with this long enough you're out, we got it, and are there steps? Are there appeals? Um, what are we really looking at in terms of when we must get this done? Tom, you wanna to take that one? Sorry, to, to kick it to Tom Ferrer, but he's been part of this longer than I have. Well, I think if you go on the website and watch the video from when the state and the county EHS were here last week, they will say, if we see progress, and we talked about phasing, but they expect the whole district. They said that at the meeting, so watch that video. But they said, if you show a plan of how you're gonna do this, and but ultimately come up with a solution for the whole district, we are gonna back off on you. 
and, uh, and, and not implement. Because they talked about, um, I have neighbors here that have had issues with their septic tank. They have the authority to say, you're done. You're gonna spend 50, 30,000, 60,000, whatever, and you're gonna put an advanced on-site system. But they're willing to say, just repair it as long as you're making progress to the ultimate, ultimate system. So I would say that their tolerance for how soon it is is probably a reflection on us showing that you know we're, we're making progress. And so um, not a hard, fast time uh, or hard, hard fast uh, um, uh, date, but I think they will, the discussion will be, I think, I will also say that LAPCO, which formed our district, is of the same opinion. We've gone back for extensions several uh, times. We'll be going back again. We won't have a vote before this spring. And they continue to want to see progress. And we have shown progress since the district was formed, and, and LAPCO has been happy. And I think the state and regional board at their last meeting have expressed that, you know, we want to see that you're serious and that you're moving towards a district-wide solution. And then we'll talk to you about phasing. The bottom line is, is uh, there is no actual deadline, but it's a matter of showing progress and, and, and probably negotiating ongoing. Yes, sir, here, and then we'll go to the back. Yeah. I'm Nelson. Uh, one of the other things that came out of that that I was surprised to learn uh, is that they said they want to do away with septic tanks completely in the small lot areas. So you don't really have an option to stay on a septic, even the advanced on-site when a system, they want something that will serve the entire community. Doesn't have to be all in one spot, but in, it's, it's going to eliminate the true septic tank on anything under two and a half acres. So the idea that was there at one point that, well, if we deal with downtown, and we can fix that, and the nitrate level is low, maybe we don't have to do the rest. That's, that's a pipe dream. They said, they said that that's not gonna happen because they want to eliminate septic tanks on the under two and a half acre lots. Thank so you for that. that to Thank me, you. that clarifies a lot. Right. It did for me. Right. I hope for Same, it. yeah, not an option to go for it. Okay, in the back here, and then we'll go over here. Yeah. Um, just a comment, you have potential for odor. Can you add and noise? Yes, noise is a concern, absolutely. I'll, I'll get that up on here too, thank you. Um, potential for noise for those online. Uh, here, if you don't, yeah, and then we'll go back here, yes. Yeah, hey, my name is Paul Rohrer, and I was just, you know, maybe it's my nerdy self, but I had some concerns about environmental impacts and how some, uh, plans might have more environmental impacts than others, and you know, as a, an attorney by profession, I have the concern that sometimes uh, some sets of impacts may cause litigation that goes on for years and years and has costs. And wouldn't we want to consider those and factor those in in making our choices? Thank you for that. Let me give me a second to get it right. Here's the other thing, I promise I will transcribe my notes so no one else has to read it, so there you go. <laughs> uh, okay, we're gonna go, yes, guys, I did see your hand. Uh, let's go here first and then here and then I'll move back over here. Which one, me? Yeah, hey, sure, yeah, she's looking at you, okay. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, just, uh, I was also at the meeting with EHS, Environmental Health and, and uh, Regional Water Quality Control Board and I worked for many, many years uh, before the district was formed with the previous director of environmental health. And at th that time, they would tell us that we are, they were really most interested in the small parcels, the downtown and the small parcels. And Tom, I'm not sure if it's a system for the whole town that the, that, that the regional board is requiring. It may be a system for the whole town, but I think it's a, a plan for how to deal with it based on density and so forth of lots. So I think the community should have options on what it wants, but I don't think it's one system it has to be for the whole entire district. It very well could be, but it's one plan of how the district is going to satisfy the regulators. And some of the information that was shared at that meeting by environmental health with regards to some of the advanced treatment was not actually accurate. Some of the engineers who specialize in this were on the phone and said there's some misinformation. So I think it's 
Most important, as Mrs. Gott said at the beginning of the meeting, that we make sure we have 100% complete information and that we don't turn any options off until the community decides we don't want that. Okay. So let me, let me reiterate that second point, um, and I think I, I get a sense that there's general agreement, that there, if there's any question, is, is that accurate, that we're going in with the best information? And if anyone sees something that they believe is not, by all means, flag it. Mm -hmm. um, to the first point, let me just check this by, by Guy and the board. Is, is it a true statement that a single plan is what the state is pushing, but not necessarily a single city, so meaning it could look different in different parts of the district? I mean, I can't. Yeah. Yeah, so um, they have said they, they do want to see, I think the March words are, are pretty active. They do want to see a plan for the entire system, for the entire district. They, they also want to know that we're moving forward that plan, though. It can't just be a, oh, here's a plan we're never going to implement it. Right? It has to be a plan that gets everybody off of their septic tanks that's in the district, I mean, it's off of their septic tanks and into a community system. Okay. So what Mark said is correct? We have to have a plan for the entire district. Yes, but it could so be actually different. Right. different, they, different they, but it could be different pieces implemented. Right. It doesn't have to be one gravity systems. Right. Exit, for example, you could have multiple solutions yeah. within that. Yeah, that, that was the gist of your. In fact, yeah. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me speak to that if I could. Yeah, please. So, yeah, please you're absolutely right. In fact, that's one of the things that the engineer is looking at. Does awesome. it make sense, for instance, for I'm just going to use this. I'm not saying it does. For right. everybody to be on gravity, or does it make sense for everybody to be on effluent? The answer maybe maybe not. Maybe some make sense for this, and other parts that. So. Thank you. Yes, sir. I was just going to say kind of the same thing. It doesn't have to be a centralized treatment plant. It can be a hybrid system where there's something here that works for that area, and something over here that works for that area. It doesn't necessarily all have to be connected together. It can be like separate systems covering certain areas. That and when we get to, back to these, there, that, that's where things like cost, location, will there will be a, you know, an if then statement on a lot of those. Uh, did you did you want to speak? Um, I think the question. My name is Christy Wolf. Uh, I think the question Nancy discussed her answer. Someone mentioned the elimination of a septic tank. Is that within the district and outside of the district, or just within the district? Elimination so is the pressure to eliminate all septic? Ultimately, just in the district, or is that a broader universal push? Can we get a? Do we know that? So um, we're only concerned about the district right, at this right. point. I wouldn't want to speak for those yeah. regulatory yeah. agencies. The gist that I that we got from them was anything under two and a half acres inside the district. That was the target. That was the target mm -hmm. for us. Now, whether that applies to other areas that are, we're not the only part of the special. Problems there. There are other elements of that throughout this whole. Thing. There are other special yes. places. So and they, they're going to have to deal with theirs. Yeah. In their way. Okay. okay. All right. Well, th so let's focus. Well, obviously tonight we'll focus in the district. Um, if we know anything about legislative environment, we know that ultimately this is a signal for what's probably going everywhere. Ultimately, but I appreciate that. Okay. We're going to go this way. Yes, sir. And then we'll come over here. Yeah. Uh, Steve Trent. I live on Alder Street. Anyway, um, I just have I'm a sorry. question thinking oh, that. Oh, um, sorry. Shh. I think my good thing is lost, so. And we're in the room yet, please? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what I understand is that the, uh, you know, the obviously the point of trying to eliminate all the septic tanks is uh, taken. But I was wondering, is it possible that it could be split up and say, because effluent is really the problem. It's not the septic tank itself that's the problem, because those can be pumped out, and it's the effluent that's the problem. Isn't that, isn't that correct? So um, the short answer <laughs> um, is it's not easy to, to describe a good answer to you. Um, the, the problem that they have described on multiple occasions is many of our septic tanks are well beyond their life. So a septic tank, I think the term they used last year, last or it is 30 to 40 years at most, and many of our septic tanks are much older than that. And so um, they all have to be replaced at some other point. So that was the point that was being made earlier by Tom. Like, uh, dry wells and everything. A, a perfect world of brand new septic tanks might solve it, but I think they're assuming that's never going to happen. That's kind of what I gathered. Actually, they, they, they said it could, could not happen. That wouldn't solve it. Even that wouldn't solve it. All right, thank you. OK, let's go here. Yes, sir. Uh, grant and loan opportunities and how any particular system 
impacts the ability to get those. That, I think, is a big critical uh, component. So, for example, I've heard that if there's a, a waste water treatment uh, after use potential put into the system, it has a much better chance of getting better funding, better interest rates, the whole nine yards. So I think we need to really ferret that out and make sure that that is put in the equation with any system that we are finally considering because that will involve cost. You know, one retail that costs $5 million, uh, when you enter into the financing component, may actually be more costly than one that costs $7 million. Noted, thank you for that. I, I'll catch that in here too. Um, I'm gonna take a couple more and then we're gonna go ahead and run down this, this uh, core list if that's all right with everyone. But yes, sir. And just add to what you said, which is very good. Water quality coming out of the treatment plant will drive whether we can consider it to be reclamation of water and that will affect the ability to get grants. So if you put down water quality, that'll be a, a consideration I think it's really important. Okay, thank you. All right, other, now again, we're still on this other consideration before we get back to talking through the big question on the board. We good? Thumbs up? Okay. All right, so here's what I want to ask. Um, and, and we're going to do this a couple ways. You, you have the sheets here? We got about 60 of us in the room. I stood in the back and counted. Um, and so there's there are two ways that we're going to ask for your input. So we want to we want to have the conversation, obviously, and that's what we've been doing. We'll keep doing that. But we also want to have something quantitative that the board can then use. So the board's asked us to say, here's where I my my uh, preferences are ranked. Um, I I've, I've actually got there's two scales on here. So I'm going to wait till everyone. Uh, has one of these, and I'll speak slowly. Actually, while we're doing that, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you to pass around the sticky notes too, or maybe blocks of them. Okay. Um, and the second thing we're going to do is I'm going to ask. I know I apologize if this starts to feel like third grade, or maybe I don't apologize. Maybe you like third grade, um, and I have third graders, so that's why it's on my mind. But but uh, take a look at if, if folks will take one of these and then take three sheets off those posters. Doesn't matter if they're big or small. Guy rated all of his cupboards at home to come up with this stack of sticky notes, post-its. Um, but everyone should have three of those post-it notes. Um, share with a neighbor if you've hoarded them. I'm going to trust that everyone's going to take three. And for folks that are online, uh, there's actually a Google form that uh, Guy's created that will we'll make sure you see, that will uh, capture the same information. So once everyone has one, I want to walk through how these sheets are structured. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. 
important can take two different levels. It could be something I really want or something I don't really don't want. Yes. So they could both get a one and be at opposite ends. That is true. <laughs> and so that is what we're measuring. We're not, we're not, because here, and here's the problem. As of now, we don't have, we can't say here's the plan and here's the three options. That, we're not there yet. But what the board wants to be able to do is to absolutely do that. And so what we want to know is where is the energy, where is people's attention, where are the big things to grapple with versus the things that more folks are, you know, we can go either way. That's really what this is measuring, okay? Any questions? Good on, yes? On the IAMA, is residential property owner versus community members, do we know if it's like the global, mostly most of one the market describes, yes. or does that mean CSD? No, it's more okay. along that. Okay. Yeah. Your community right. right. There may be others in the room that are, you know, represent. And it's entirely possible you're both, by the way. Some folks own commercial and residential property, so just mark, mark as you as you see fit. Yes, sir? Whatever system slash systems are eventually voted on and selected, yep. do they have to be built within that shaded area that we show them on? That, so my assumption is yes, but I want to go to these folks and say, so, um, <laughs> Let me rephrase your question. Yeah. Okay. Can, okay. So the question is, if we build a system, must it be in that current boundary? The answer is no. We would expand the boundary to probably include uh, that. Well, but can, you, can you rephrase that? Because you're saying yes, but you could expand the boundary. Yeah. That we correct? can, just as they did in other communities. Okay, so cases. the answer is yes, but you would have to expand the boundary. Right. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry. Yeah, just okay. One way to be included the area of our To include the disposal site. Yeah, it could. Yeah, not, I'm talk about not to well. expand the potential for other people to use the system within your district. Oh, right. So there is a <laughs> difference there. Yep, a big difference. Thank you. But it can be expanded to, to help people. Oh, you can expand the district right? to do anything. They've like, already told they you. They answered the question. Lafco, La 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 you can expand the district. The system. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name yes, is sir. Thank you. My name is Isaac Carrier. If you own multiple properties at yep. San Los Amigos, do you get a vote for each one of those properties? Yes. Yeah. Commercial, residential. Yes? Yeah. Vote, vote is <laughs> by parcel, correct? <laughs> so, you know, buying votes, there you go. You can do it. All right. Hey, can I just ask one thing? Other clarifying uh, questions? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I think that, I think that um, Director Farron talked about this before, right? That you looked into it. One, it can be expanded to provide service to anywhere, and two, you can be forced to take that in, right? If if others uh, uh, so choose, isn't that? Was no. your parent, isn't that what you were told? No. If they could force you to take it in? No, that's huh? not correct. Oh. That's not what you said the other day. No. Oh, okay, that's right. I must have just heard you. Okay, so the, the short answer to this earlier question is. Theoretically, something could be some some infrastructure could be built outside the district, but more likely than not, or almost certainly, then that would be brought into the district by some. Pro okay, all right. That would be brought into the district. That that area that's that outside. Area. Yes. Period. Okay. No. Yeah, no, no, it's not period. So Mike, it's just not so period. Enough. Just to answer the question earlier that came up about really quickly about connection to solving that was examined and. Have to talk to you. She left, didn't she? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, she did. Yeah, the, 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 okay. we're asking about, yeah, yeah about could that be. My glasses off. Okay. All right. Okay, any other clarifications on what we're doing here? Yep. No. Just no. real briefly, so when we do the rank, yep. and we do one, yep. can we rank the others according to like a two or a three? Yes. yes. So, what we, so there's a couple of different kinds of feedback we're getting here. First of all, the conversation, which is being recorded and recorded. Second is this, which we can actually then have some numbers that the board can use. Um, and the third thing, which I was going to ask people to get up and do, which will allow for folks to go ahead and add any commentary. So what I was hovering in the back doing earlier when we started, um, I've taken each of those these here um, and, and broken them out, and they're on a separate sheet of paper. And they're in order, starting over here. Um, and those little post-it notes, in a, in a moment, I'm going to re release you uh, to this fine third grade activity, which I first enjoy. But what I want you to do is, it's, it's sort of a different version of what you've got here on the paper, which is, this is the important one to me, but that's where you can weigh in on in what direction it's important. So for folks that said, this is really important, 
So let me tell you why, and, and this is what it is. I, we want to record that, and that we will transcribe all of that as well. And for folks online, there's an online version of that as well. So we will then have rankings, we'll have relative importance, and we will have in what ways. Um, and, and that way, at least, we're, we're going to capture that. And that's sort of the technical side of how. And now we're going to have some time, after we do that, to talk through these one by one and make sure that there's clarification, that there's, you know, we can, we can ask uh, Tom and, and the board to give you a little bit more color to, you know, what, when we say cost, or well, what's the range of possibility, et cetera, okay? All right, any other clarifications on this little tool right here? Then I would like to ask to release you with your post-it notes around the room. What I've tried to do is, is take up every flat piece of wall space that doesn't do this, um, that will allow you to stick notes on. We're gonna act, that's quantitative, so we're gonna just count how many people said, these are the three important things that I want to do. And then if you've got a pen, if you need a pen, let me know. i got extra markers too. Commentaries are fine. This is your graffiti moment. Um, and we're going to capture that as well. All right? Okay. Uh, do you have time? Yeah, we'll, I'll, we'll take about 10 minutes for that and ask everybody to get back to their seats. That's fair. We'll, we'll yell at you when it's time to sit down. All right, this is your stretch your leg moment. Yes, sir. Um, I do not. I did not put in other sheet just for the commentary, but I can. All right. I'll, I'll add an other right here. How about that? All right.
Rashid, I'm going to ask you, you're going further afield than what we're here to, to talk about tonight, so I, I think the board will be happy to receive the documents. Um, but is there anything else on the, what's on tonight's agenda specifically around future planning that you wanted to share? I think we got the, we got the message. Well, I, I addressed, yes, I addressed the location. I think okay. that, uh, I, I guess that we're going to come to location. I'm still not clear uh, how the location was chosen and why would you want to export your switch outside your district to your neighbors who cannot vote on your decision. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, that is noted. And then I want to pass it to Jim. I saw another hand up there, Jim. Uh, I think you mean Jim and Laura? Jim and Laura, yes, yeah, sorry. That's the downside of virtual. Yes, thank you, Laura. Oh, no worries. No, we just wanted to know whether you wanted us to send in the Google form while you were collecting the post-its. But I didn't want to send it without the rest of the information filled in, so no worries. Okay. No, we, we, you got time. We can do that uh, anytime in the next day or two, and I know Guy will get it. So thank you. All right. Right on. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for, um, again, all the detail, the feedback. What I want to do now is I just want to walk through this quickly and see if there's anything left now that you had a chance to look at it all, think about it, put it all down, any last clarifications, and then what we want to do is I'm going to give Guy the, the floor back um, because the effluent disposal options that are on the sheet, there is some more information to share on that particular piece. So. Um, Yes, I think it's Henry on the on the train. All right. Um. Yes. So uh, I was trying to make a comment about uh, capping the development uh, downtown, uh, utilizing uh, some uh, with the the wastewater treatment facility in Emily City uh, uh, downtown, and um, occupy ten percent of the wastewater uh, treatment uh, uh, facility. Okay. Um, Henry, do you, you have the uh, the form as well? So some of the specifics like that, if you could capture that in writing, that would be really helpful too. When you're when you're no longer mobile, does that work? Oh, I think we lost it. Okay. Okay. So here's what I want to ask. Um, anything on the cost? Anything? I, yes. I have Bebe Ziegler. I forgot to say it earlier. Yeah. Uh, brand at me. Um, the cost, the capital cost, what is a plant, an average plant that we might be considering? How many years is the capitalization for something like that? As we're all trying to do back of the napkin math on cost, potential cost, what's that capitalization? What's the AMOR on that? Yeah, um, Tom, you're probably better at this than me because you've done this sort of stuff before, but it's typically 40 years. Yeah, it, it can be uh, up to 40 years. Um, 30 to 40 years is typical. So for those online, the question was, how long do you uh, capitalize a, a project like this? And the answer is up to 40 years. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Anything else like that? Clarification on costs? Okay. Uh, location. I think we're all clear on that's a, that's a big one. We've had a few very good detailed comments, yes. I think it, for location, though, it really depends on what kind of system and treatment you're going to have, right? Yes. I mean, if you're going to have a, a park, everybody wants a park. But <laughs> if you're going to have right. a giant, stinky factory, nobody wants it, right? So exactly. I, it's a little, that's a tough it's one. It's a hard uh, one to talk about in abstract. So yes. I, I if you don't have a plan, is... you can't really talk about location. Right. right. But, I, but we oh. at least know how, how highly focus folks are on that particular piece of it. So, and, and believe me, the, the district, don't believe me, believe them, um, you, will, you will see as that gets developed, especially after the technical comes in, which is happening very shortly here, that, that then you can get start to get more specific. Um, but some of the creative ideas that have been expressed have all been recorded tonight, so I, I, I do appreciate that. Um, ownership and maintenance responsibility. A, a couple of comments have been made here, um, and I think it's probably worthwhile to, to highlight them. Um, that this can be divided a number of different ways. And so I know this is kind of a catch-all comment or category, um, but we know that this is also a major one about, okay, who owns the infrastructure, who's responsible for maintaining the infrastructure? I know Anne-Marie was saying, you know, is it just the electricity or is it the actual maintenance ongoing? Does the district go Do I own it? Do we share it? Um, and there are plenty of examples of this in public infrastructure. Um, but I, again, not knowing yet which one you're going to choose, I, I would ask tonight, is there any other clarifications that folks need about what, we, what we're asking for input there on, or what the details, what would be helpful there. 
I know I just butchered those two sentences in ways that my English teacher would be horrified at. Yes, sir. The only thing that goes with that that, that came up in one of the uh, in Anna Marie's uh, statement that is something that I think about is what are owners willing to do to not have that maintenance responsibility? Would they be willing, if it went to a certain system, that they would provide the easement or get the system put in a place that is more easily accessed? So yep. and there's a lot more thought that needs to go into that yep. that everybody really needs to think about. Right. Uh, and we won't solve it tonight, obviously, but I appreciate you it, it's the kind of thing that bringing that up. Yep. That's, that's going to be one of your choices to be what you vote for, what okay. you want to do. Yeah. That's worth paying attention to. Absolutely. So for those online, yeah, the, the trade-offs implicit in this question are, are massive. So we want to make sure, and, and again, yeah, we're not going to solve tonight, but positioning of, of infrastructure, ownership of infrastructure, possible easements, all those things are, are a big part of it. Yes? And if there is independent property owner maintenance responsibilities the csd i assume could also negotiate so that we could have uh, we could all sign on if we wanted to to get a lower rate for that maintenance by a third party to do it for us as opposed to everybody going and doing it their own one-off like that there could be a possibility of that sort of negotiation it's as the well. scale so of the yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. yeah i see nodding heads absolutely thank you Okay, what about the potential for growth and do zone? This is a pretty simple one. I think the answer is pretty universal, which is we don't want to do anything that invites a massive urbanization of Los Olivos, right? Um, and, and I know that some people had more particular comments there. Any, any clarification? Can we move on from that one? Okay. Uh, treatment plant, the footprint and the size, again, this is very much about what <laughs> system you choose, whether you're talking about single site, multiple sites. Um, again, something people want to think about, and, and as we get <coughs> feedback, we will definitely use it. I know the board wants that. Okay. Potential for odor, pretty straightforward. Any, any, you know, yeah, we'll go here and here. Yes. Well, I actually want to go back. Potential for growth inducement. Yes. We can't assume, I mean, I don't know anything downtown, but we can't assume that they don't want growth because that would ruin their businesses. I mean, they're, I think they're pretty opposite motivation from residential people. <laughs> okay, fair, all right, appreciate that. So the comment was, uh, my, my flippant remark that uh, everyone <laughs> wants, does not want to incentivize mass urbanization, uh, and I saw nodding heads, but yes, they're, they're depending residential versus commercial, there are different levels of tolerance and interest in attracting activity and, and certainly economic activity. Yes? Yeah, they're also, like, I think, Commercial people might have an interest in keeping it small just because they're built. Somebody with raw land, or if like you have a lot of land that was undeveloped that you desire to develop in the future, you might really want to see it sort of go in. So again, these are the kinds of things as we get more specific on plans that that's the feedback the board is, is going to want to need. Um, and then yes, sir. You know, the downtown. You know, I think there's this impression that they're all flush with cash and that they're all going to benefit from the sewer, but I actually think there's some retail, like some of the non-wine tasting retail, that uh, too much additional cost to rent actually could put them out or move them out. So I think we do have to be aware of that. Yeah. And I think there's property owners that own some of the old historic buildings that um, are going to have less benefit than someone building a brand new building. And downtown is currently zoned mixed use, so you can put residential upstairs. And the only limiting factor we've had is wastewater, mm -hmm. quite frankly. And the state's doing a bunch of parking <laughs> stuff. You don't need parks. So there's a lot of factors kind of at play. The thing I was going to mention is just on the footprint is I think it depends on what treatment plant we go with because there's some that are like ground level that maybe take up a bigger footprint but they're ground level you don't see them or they're underground and there's some that are above ground that are smaller footprint but may yeah. be more visible. So. And there may be an inverse relationship between the view shed and the treatment meaning bigger but lower versus something that everybody's got to look at. So absolutely. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, view shed impacts. Any clarifications, commentary, revelations? I know we captured some of that on the walls and on here, so thank you. Okay. And then the innovation question, uh, you know, just sort of general preferences for newer, innovative technologies versus older, I would say tried and true, but there's newer ones that are also tried and true. So, yes. Um, that just seems a little subjective. Is there any 
mm -hmm. um, industry standards in terms of what is required to be a quote unquote proven system versus what is a proven innovative system and then a, <laughs> a, a more um, experimental. These are, these are non technical system. categories I realize that we use. Yeah. Here, so. Uh, do you well, want to comment? I also that. want to invite you if you want to, you've made a comment earlier about experience in that area. Too. Yeah, it, it's just I've seen several of the systems installed in clients' properties and they, they take up so much space that they simply wouldn't work on many of the parcels that are close to the town. Um, when you get into the larger parcels, maybe 10,000 plus square feet, they can work, but anything smaller than that, they just don't fly. Did you want to comment so, on the general? Yeah. Uh, why don't you ask that question again, and I'll try to, I'll try oh, to respond. Just, so. um, it, you know, it's, it's a little vague, mm -hmm. and so I think I'm personally for innovation, but when does a system meet in, you know, industry standards that say it's actually proven versus still out there? Yeah, so um, I, I think the, the reason that one is up there is, you know, for instance, and I'm just going to, this, this is no statement about my preference or anybody's preference, it's just a statement, right? right? So we know that gravity fed sewers have been around for thousands of years, I don't know how many thousands of years, I mean the Romans were even, right? Um, so that's an, an understood technology, there's not a whole, I mean you can, you can shrink it, you can use different types of pipes, but it's basically the same as it's always been, right? So that's a tried and true. There are other systems out there that are newer, um, that maybe, for instance, have never been permitted on the Central Coast, or maybe never been permitted in the state of California, or not been used in a, in a community of our size, meaning maybe they've only been used in, say, a mobile home park, but they've never scaled to a community this size. Or maybe the other side, they've only been used in LA, and we've never shrunk them down to something our size. So that's getting a little innovative, right? We, you know, that, yeah. that would be changing the norm, I could call it maybe, fairly. Um, so that's what we're getting at with that one. Is that? Yeah, I mean, because I think there are systems that have been used successfully in other areas, and just because it hasn't been used in this area doesn't mean that it hasn't been proven. Sorry. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. It was really more just that, oh, it's never been used in a, in a community our size or in California or for a residential yeah. commercial mix or who knows what. I was just going to say, the yeah. innovative, the new fancy stuff may look shiny, but then when it fails in 10 years, I guess it wasn't such a bargain. And, and I'm not picking and choosing, but so innovation for the sake of innovation, you really got to balance it against all the right things. Should we use the most innovative thing in this, that would fit in this particular instance? Maybe if the cost looks good and we understand the risks of what, because right, you always have to think about what happens if it doesn't work, and then you gotta rip it all out and replace it. Won't the state have a say in that as well? If we present something tremendously innovative, they may not say yes. They're looking for nitrate reduction, right? The, the technologies that you guys are considering right now that you have your engineer working on the step and or a fluent sewer and while they may be innovative to Santa Barbara County, they're not innovative and they've been around forever. The regional board members said, oh yeah, you could do that or you could do gravity. So it's not like we're talking about some brand new technology. These, and they all meet uh, federal standards, state standards. So there's performance standards that they have to meet. So I don't think the district's gonna look at putting anything in that's experimental. Oh, thank you. Okay, um, so thank you for the other issues. I know we captured some of the high level ones at the front end of the conversation, and, and thank you for those that put it on the board. So I think we've got all the other things that are not on this list or things that intersect with this list. Um, at this point, oh, yes, before I do it. Well, are we allowed to comment on you are? the issues over there? <laughs> Please. Back to, back to the timeline? Yes, timeline. Um, I do think, you know, based on other experiences, that something like is is it, if we have to do a full environmental impact report, everybody has a pretty good idea how long EIR is taken in the county. So I think it would be helpful to share that kind of context 
with people so they learn to accept what what the timeline that they may not live to see the <laughs> So for those who are online, maybe if I may, yeah, please, um, go ahead. never been through uh, to the point uh, a full environmental impact report, EIR, um, in the county, along the central coast, not just this county, but pretty much along the central coast. They're, they're time consuming, and they take months, sometimes more than months. Um, so just know that that's what we're coming up to. And as the specifics of the plan get clarified, there will be better and better. You know, it's going to go away to some extent over time and we'll be able to see it. So that's what a percolation chamber is. Um, Alamo Pintado Creek Outfall, as the name implies, take the water and put it in the creek, right? I'm going to talk about a little bit more about that in a minute. Shallow aquifer injection wells, um, the consultants assume three, but this is, as you can imagine, what you do is you drill a well, right, and you push the water into it. So you're going to inject the water back into the groundwater. Um, Call it shallow aquifer because you might be down 100, 150 feet. Um, just for those who are wondering, our drinking water tends to come from more like 1,000 feet, not from that shallow aquifer, it comes from a deep aquifer. Um, and then lastly, they looked at, uh, officially looked at disposal by reclaimed water use. So this is things like purple pipe to water community things, um, maybe used uh, for uh, agricultural uses, that sort of a thing. Um, so what they did was, um, this is sort of just definitions, I'm sorry, I just, just described that. Um, what they did was they put together, much like we've been talking about tonight, um, they put together a series of criteria, and this was their rankings, uh, and provided in a report, if you want to see the full report, it's on the website, um, about things like permitting requirements, how difficult or easy are those, what's the effluent quality, so that's what I was talking about a minute ago. Uh, what's the social impact? What's the footprint of this thing? Water reclamation issues, feasibility, and so on and so forth, you can read them all, including capital, <coughs> excuse me, and on end cost. Now in their case, they used a higher number is better for each one of these, and they rated ponds, chambers, creeks, and injection. And the reason they didn't rate water reuse is they said, you know, as a standalone solution, it probably doesn't make sense for your community. You won't be always able to reuse every bit of the water, Instead, what they said was, if you're going to consider it, consider it in conjunction with one of these four. So this is what they came up with. So in their ranking, ponds came out slightly better than chambers. And then there was a big jump down, in this case, because again, higher numbers are better, to creeks and injection. And I'm going to show you on this next slide why that was. Um, I realize this was a little harder to read because I was trying to squeeze some more data in here. Um, so look at these. Uh, so here's ponds, chambers, injection wells, and outfall. Um, so here's the costs they, they demonstrated for those, and this is their estimations. Um, so the capital cost for a percolation pond, about $700,000. Percolation chamber, about one point twenty five. dollars Shallow water injection, shallow aquifer, rather, injection wells, $900,000. Um, and then they couldn't really give an estimate for the outfall or the reuse because it's kind of site specific where you would do that. Importantly, and the reason the injection wells ranked so low was that own in cost. It was upwards of three to four million dollars a year. So obviously on the cost scale, you know, um, keep in mind, simple math, we have just under 400 parcels in the district. So a number like four million can be easily divided by 400. Right? Um, so that's an annual cost that would be passed on to homeowners or parcel owners. Um, Alamo Pintado Creek outfall um, uh, has some unique things about it. They're really shown over here. So this is, would we be able to get approval by the Regional Quality and Water Board as well as DHS? Yes, 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 yes. Until you get to the Alamo Pintado uh, outfall, that requires a federal permit as well. So. Um, for those of you who are used to dealing with, you think dealing with the county's bad, <laughs> I'm slapping, she knows, um, anytime you have to, to get a permit from the feds, that's, it's a 
it's a much higher burden to, to get over. Um, and that's an, a $10,000 annual permit. So that's part of the reason that one fell lower on the scale. Um, you can see on the notes here, I took these from the report, um, you know, the size that would be uh, required for each of them. Shallow water, they assume three injection wells, uh, and then um, they noted, but then again, with the outfall, much like with the injection wells, you'd have to have really high quality water um, coming out of your treatment plant in order to inject it. And normally that means things like reverse osmosis or uh, um, infrared kind of technologies to, to purify the water or some other secondary treatment. I'm sorry, Guy, is that slide on the website? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this then, so that's kind of the technical data behind this, right? This isn't about picking vendor A over vendor B. This is now going to lead to the same sort of exercise, I think, let me make sure. Um, yeah, I, I really just wanted to, now you've been armed with a little bit of data. I'm sorry, it's not more at this point. Um, didn't want to go through the whole report since we saw it uh, just in December, but I did want to at least from, again, I recognize it's not perfect, it's not complete information, but something to help you understand how would you see things? We saw how the consultants saw them and what they rated them on. How would you see them? Sure. Um, so questions for clarification, of course this is the box at the bottom of the sheet. Um, you can use the same rank and scale. Any clarifying? Yes. Um, this may be implied by some of the information, but I am not clear if there is an environmental benefit to one over the other. Um, I know that it listed DHS as yes or no, but there was no ranking if one is, is better. Did I miss that? So, um, all, yeah, they were all acceptable. Yeah. Do you recall exactly? I thought there was a component of the social that reflected that in their, in their ranking. You know, the social is more of the effect on the community as far as the visual. Okay. Uh, so, um, I don't know if that helps. <laughs> what, what did he say? I'm sorry. What did he say social is? More effect on the community broadly. Neither of us could remember perfectly what, what okay. their yeah. comment. I, I thought maybe it partially included uh, their I don't want to say it did. But they're all acceptable environmentally. And they seem to have competing environmental benefits and drawbacks the way that they did that grid. Well, that's so, what I was wondering, yeah. if that might be something also to add to this, that, you know, this one might be the best for the environment, but it's also going to be the most expensive back to the, you know, balance of that. I think we all want the best for the environment, but at the same time, that can sometimes come to that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Regarding the chambers, was that 3.83 acres underground? Good question. Uh, was yeah. 3.3 acres in underground measure? Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then question on the ponds, how are those protected? Okay. Do we, did you get that far? And how, how the ponds, wherever they would be located, would be protected? Meaning protected walls? Chain link. Chain link. Meaning, oh, yeah, so yeah. the folks aren't swimming, for example? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have a hand for that? Yes. So we'll take a look at the We were at the EHS meeting last time where the, um, the Regional Water Quality Board was there as well. They were saying that there's a huge amount of funding available for the recycle. Is that correct? Um, and so is that the purple pipe thing or is that injecting and, and how does that then affect the whole groundwater sustainable, or sustainable groundwater management act? Is that a benefit? That whole thing that's going to affect us greatly here too. Yeah. So the comment for those online, and if I get it wrong, correct me please. Uh, was essentially that you know what what was in, what were they talking about when they were talking about reuse? Was it purple pipe kind of reuse or ag reuse that sort of thing? Short answer is yes, and yes, there is a lot of grant money for that sort of an implementation, uh, or more grant money available should we do and that. And then would that then also help with getting more grant money for whatever treatment we did as well, or do you know mm -hmm. the answer to that? And then my last question is, how much effluent are we assuming there's going to be? Like how many acre feet or gallons or, you know, that we're gonna technically have to deal with? So what was the first one? Sorry, so will it, will we, will getting- With giving funding for one piece, funding for others. Yeah, um, potentially, but they didn't guarantee that anyway. Um, and 
and then I don't recall exactly offhand the, the acre feet. Um, it's, it's in the, the report. One of the things you talked about before, for everybody's sake, is you look through these various reports, is um, I think everybody looks at the flow numbers and says, you know, are those accurate and what are those based on, right? And so um, they've been done by engineers and we're going to look at them again, I think is, is the short answer. And ultimately, how much you take in, right, drives how much you push out. All right, so I, there's a few hands, so anyone else over here? Yes. Sure, is, was re-injection, is that a reuse or a reclamation? No, okay. Not, not in their definition. Okay, no. that's what I wanted. Go here and then here, yes. So a uh, question on the uh, one discharge into the creek, I understand it's a federal permit. Do we have any idea on the cost and the ongoing cost? I know that Chumash does that at their creek, and I don't know if there's other locals, but I know it's a, uh, it's a thing, but can we know the cost on it? And then uh, the other one is the leach or the, uh, the wells, the two to three million. How deep is that? Is that going in the aquifer or is that shallow wells? Yeah. Shallow. Shallow wells. Okay. Yeah. It's not going down a thousand feet. I think they were targeted. Uh, so the question was, how deep is the injection well going? I believe they were targeted <coughs> 150 feet. Great. And, is, and do we, are we looking for cost on what a federal permit would be to discharge the creek or no? Um, they included more commentary in the report, and I was trying to shoot the short here. $10,000. Well, the permit alone was 10000 and any, yeah. there's, the, the big concern they held was if you have, um, yeah. what I'm looking for. Um, if, you, if you don't meet the standards. Yeah, if you don't meet the standards, yeah. the fines are pretty stiff yeah. and immediate. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yes sir. The thing about the uh, water reclamation that they pointed out too is that if you have that as part of your plan, it'll bump your plan up the higher up in the chain for approval. They'll look at that a lot faster and get approval on it a lot faster if that's part of the, uh, the plan. And there, it, the whole thing doesn't have to be all water. It, it, like you said, you could have the containers in fields where you've got to park. You could have the reclamation. You could have any combination of those to do what you need to do. So if you're not stuck with just one, you, you have a, an ability to no. diversify yeah. it. Thank you. Okay. Um, hey, look, it was 8 o'clock. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to ask for two things. So for, I know some folks had to leave and they've already turned in those sheets. For those of you that are here, first of all, thank you for staying for duration. Um, we would love your commentary on that second bottom box on the sheet, um, given that there's a little more information on this piece of it. Um, I want to say that the, the district has been, and I, I went when I first got the call, <laughs> I said, oh, let me see what you've already posted. So there's a lot of information posted. They're being you know, very transparent. Every time there's more new data, it's there. You can look at it. Um, I, uh, I want to ask Guy, to, as, as the, the man who picks up the phone when you call, um, to tell folks what, what kind of feedback and how to reach them if you do think of something tonight, later on, this week. Um, so I'm going to hand that to you for closing remarks on more information gathering and how you'd like it to happen. Yeah, so um, certainly, again, my email address is, is probably the best way, right? That way you can write it down and I can get back to you. You're certainly welcome to call the district's phone. Um, I do answer it a couple times a day. Um, Importantly, this, the form you filled out, there is a slightly different version of it uh, online. It's again on the special meeting for tonight's page. Um, so if you remember a question later on, or oh my gosh, there's a point I wanted to make at the meeting tonight, please go to that and just add your comment or question. Uh, there's a, a large section at the bottom of that form to be able to, to put that in. Um, Tom, I think you had one comment you wanted to make as well? What, at the closing? Yep, I think we're So there. I think we're, we're wrapping up, it's, it's eight o'clock. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, different viewpoints are what we want to hear, and this has been really great. I do want you to know that Jeff has come up here, and he's done this for us for free. And I've known Jeff a while, and he's a tremendous <laughs> I've since I said that, we wouldn't have a problem, but um, we really appreciate Now I can. I'm not changing anything. Yeah, we really appreciate you coming up and helping us with this, and uh, quite a... Uh, a generous person with your time. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you all for making this actually pretty pleasant. Um, uh, no, really. This, I, mean, I learned a lot as well, and I, I know that how hard this is, and I know you know there's a lot of deep moving pieces. So I, I want to appreciate everybody that took the time to do this, and I know that you've uh, there's more to come. 
Um, there will be this iterative, so there's more. We'll, we'll be doing this again. I don't know exactly when, but we don't have anything. If you want to have advertise future dates and invitations, hey, look at that. Um, uh, February 15th, yes, the regular meeting, which uh, has been calendar for some time, where some of this will be taken back up. Do you or Tom want to say anything about anything specific on February 15th? Are we, everything's online and we're good. Okay, all right, I want to say thank you.